we have a solar storm grays, some noctilucent clouds, and some new regions on the sun's far side could brighten our day. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has definitely calmed down a bit compared to last week. As we take a look at our front-sided sun, you can see that southern polar coronal hole that gave us some fast polar wind about oh, a few days ago. That is finally rotating to the sun's far side. And we do have a northern coronal hole that's going to also be giving us some more fast wind here over the next couple days. And we also have region 2833. Now this poor region has not been as strong as the last time we saw it. But it did back on the 18th give us a few puffs and one of those puffs was actually a solar storm that launched eastward. That solar storm is maybe going to graze us right around midday on the 23rd but it's pretty weak so we're not expecting much from that. Meanwhile as we expect this fast solar wind from this polar coronal hole in the north to give us a little bit of a boost on the 24th that's about it. We've got maybe a small enhancement that could give us some more fast wind from mid- uh, equatorial regions, but eh, it's kind of hard to say if that's going to give us anything. But outside of that, man, the disk is kind of bland. Luckily, we do have another filament uh, that could erupt. We've been watching it, and it's really trying to lift off. It's kind of north of region 2833. But as of right now, oh gosh, I'm not sure it's going to make it. It actually might erupt on the sun's far side. Ugh, and we of course won't get any aurora show from that. However, we do have some bright regions on the sun's far side and that could be boosting the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders here in the next few days. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see over the past week the X-ray flux has been extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be reasonably low. We've been seeing just a little bit of stumbling and bumbling but really pretty flatlined all things considered. We're clear down at the B floor right now and this is because region 2833 on the earth facing disk is fizzled and there really is no other hope for sunspot on the earth facing disk right now. So this is the condition. We have really no solar flares and no chance for them over this next week. But in about four days, we will see some new spots emerging and that's when we expect to see that x-ray flux and therefore the solar flux as well begin to rise. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're just going to have to continue to hang on for a bit. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week we've been sitting pretty much at unsettled conditions. Now back around the 12th we did get a bump up to active conditions from a very small pocket of, of fast solar wind. Then we kind of settled back down and then on the 15th we got hit by a bit larger pocket. This was that southern polar coronal hole I was mentioning and that brought us some fast solar wind that bumped us to storm levels and did bring us a little bit of aurora which was really nice among the noctilucent clouds that were seen right around the same time. Sadly though, this fast solar wind that it brought really didn't last as long as, as the previous times we've seen this uh, particular coronal hole. So things just kind of settled around unsettled conditions and then slowly over 24 to 48 hours really settled back down to quiet conditions. And that's pretty much where we're at right now. And likely, even with that grazing incidence of that solar storm we're expecting right around the 23rd, we're probably not going to bump up much past this. This. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, everything should be pretty much in the green for you. And also Aurora photographers, well, we're just going to have to take a look at more noctilucent clouds until we get another chance for some more Aurora. And although the solar storms as of late have not been all that intense or all that frequent, the views have nevertheless been very stunning because the aurora has been accompanied by noctilucent clouds. And I want to show you just a few pictures of some of the amazing uh, formations that we have seen that have been dropping down into mid-latitudes in the northern hemisphere, like these gorgeous views in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. And the noctilucent clouds and aurora have seen it been, been seen in multiple places in Manitoba. And that have been seen in Alberta. Some gorgeous shots in Alberta. 
and both aurora and noctilucent clouds have dipped down as far south as the United States. Here they are in uh, Wisconsin. And they've also been seen as far south as Washington State. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, just a little bit from the side. And when you take a look at Stereo's view, well, it's beginning to look a lot like Earth view, isn't it? You can see region 2833 and the little kind of coronal hole just beneath it. 2833 on the 18th, you can see the wisps. Those are the puffs of, of solar storm material that are being launched off of the sun. Those are going to go east of Earth, but you can definitely see it very clearly in Stereo's view. But look to the east limb in Stereo. Look at these regions both in the north and in the south. These are old regions. 2830 and 2831 as they're beginning to rotate back into Stereo's view and boy are they busy. I didn't mention it on this earth-facing sun. You can actually see these things launching some solar storms and this is great because they're going to be rotating back into earth view here in the next probably day or so and they will be boosting that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. They also may uh, be sunspots as well. We might get a little bit of flare activity and we might get a chance for more solar storms. So we'll be keeping our eye on these regions here over the next week to see what they're going to bring, and perhaps space weather activity will begin to ramp up. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 24th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. This week, the activity is kind of on the downside. We don't have a lot in the forecast, but we are expecting a bit of fast solar wind right around the 24th. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, so we could see some aurora from this fast solar wind. At mid-latitudes, though, we're really only expecting quiet to unsettled conditions, but we do have about a 20% chance of active conditions, again around the 24th, because of that fast solar wind mainly. And this will continue over the few days following that, but it won't last all that long. But hopefully it'll be better than this last fast wind fizzle that we had just about a week ago. So roar photographers, if you're at high latitudes, yeah, I would expect you could have a pretty decent show. But at mid latitudes, well, maybe only if you're dedicated should you chase. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we have good news in that everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We only have region 2833 on the Earth-facing disk right now, and it is not a flare player. So GPS users on Earth's day side, you should be very happy. We have no risk for radio blackouts. However, we do have those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. And I'm going to keep that forecast in the green the extended forecast into the five day into the green right now but as we get a better look at those new regions that are going to be rotating into earth view this forecast could change very rapidly and now also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum we are uh, seeing a higher impingement of cosmic ray flux than we would like to see so you frequent flyers and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes you are in the moderate range for radiation dose this is the d2 minor range and this does include prenatal passengers so please take this into consideration in your flight plans so the space weather this week is a bit on the quiet side. We don't have a lot going on. There is a, a solar storm that's going to be glancing uh, past us right around the midday on the 23rd. And then it's going to be followed by some fast solar wind that will hit us that could bump us up to uh, possibly active conditions or even maybe storm levels at high latitudes. So roar photographers, only if you're dedicated should you chase right around the 24th and possibly into the 25th. Now we also 
also have a potential filament that's trying to erupt, but it's hard to tell. It's kind of keeping us on pins and needles, so we'll be watching for that to see if that actually launches as a solar storm, because right now it is in the Earth strike zone. So, you know, maybe we'll get another chance for a solar storm. We shall see. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, right now we're sitting almost at 80 for solar flux, despite the fact that we don't have, uh, other than just region 2833, one bright region on the Earth facing disk, but we are getting those new regions rotating into Earth view that are going to bump up that solar flux even more. So we're inching ever closer to that, that good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. So just hang in there and enjoy this slow climb. And then finally, you GPS users, well, you know, it's not so bad right now. The solar flux is still kind of down below 100, so that's good news for you. And we're not really expecting any intense solar storms, so we're not getting a lot of aurora. And, you know, I'm not sure GPS is affected by noctilucent clouds, but if you get a chance to step outside and take a look at night, it's a beautiful show. So enjoy yourself and know that that GPS reception should be pretty good all over the globe. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.